Nobody really gets it. Like, only a small group of people really understands the point in time that we are at right now. This single moment in time, this very second, where we are at right now is unprecedented. We are approaching the knee of the curve, as one would say it. Elon Musk actually put out a tweet last night. He said, we're approaching the event horizon of the singularity, which obviously I absolutely agree. I've been saying this for the past weeks or months that 2025, we're going to approach the knee of the curve, the beginning of the singularity. And by the end of this year, it'll be obvious that we're in the midst of the singularity. Um, in some ways, we've already started. If you look at like uh, AlphaFold 3, it's currently doing a billion years of research per year. Like before AlphaFold came out, we had a one-to-one -one ratio of research. Now it's a billion to one within years, <laughs> years. That is a knee, that is a knee of a curve where you form a right angle on the curve. I think we're approaching that with everything soon. It's kind of like what Sam Altman said, Moore's law for everything. When everything's automated and it's all scaling at the pace of AI, uh, everything starts to form this knee-like shape, the knee of the curve, the singularity, the event horizon. Um, I don't think the entire complex adaptive system of the economy will just like phew, go straight up. It'll be a smooth exponential, but it will be an exponential, <laughs> which is pretty interesting. So currently with today's AI, especially if you look at Grok 3, it's the current greatest model. Grok, by the way, XAI has only been out for one year. This company is only one year old and they already shipped this model that is profoundly good. Like, I don't think really, people really understand, like, the difference between the first and second derivative of the company. If that, if that rate of progress continues, even if it's half as fast by next year, we're going to have AI models that surpass every single human at any single thing that any human could possibly do. It's just a very objective thing to say. Like, it's very easy to assume that. Uh, not to mention, I think all of the models are already approaching that. <laughs> They're approaching that right now, especially within the world of STEM, like math, sciences, and stuff like that, the world of STEM. That's going to be saturated by the end of this year, if not halfway through 2025. Like, there will not be a single thing that humans can do better than these models across those domains. Now, all these things really need is agentic abilities for we are to start seeing some like massive GDP growth. Satya Nadella recently had an interview where he said he wants to see 10% GDP growth. I think he'll be quite happy pretty soon. Also, if you saw the update from Figure Robotics, we just unlocked an entirely new paradigm of scaling laws. We've had the pre-training scaling laws, which we still have a little bit of juice left. It's starting to hit arguably a point of diminishing returns. I do think we'll probably have some breakthroughs there eventually that'll unlock some more scaling. Uh, and now we have the test time compute scaling. We're now entering this new era of embodiment. These models are going to get more data within the physical world. They're going to have this at an individual level and we'll have embodiment scaling laws where not only are we training these models how to do stuff on a computer or training the models how to do stuff within the physical world like particular tasks, but the general capabilities of the robotics are now much more generalized than they were before because before we would have to train them how to do particular things with particular objects objects, now they can generalize across a large variety of objects just by semantically relating the objects that are new to its environment with the objects that it's already been trained on, generalizing outside of its training distribution to that new object, and then being able to relate that with the environment that it's learned about and be able to uh, apply its general capabilities and reason outside of its training distribution already. So arguably, we are witnessing the chat GPT moment for robotics right now. And here's the new scaling law for that. You can see this new paradigm at the top where you have all of these autonomous robots gathering all of this data, all of this information, and you can bring it back to this one centralized model that can intuitively understand, predict, and generalize across uh, many different domains and many different areas outside of its training distribution, which that's pretty profound. This is kind of why I've been saying we're going to have 
uh, robots that can do pretty much any physical thing within the physical economy in a very near future, about two to three years, I think people are going to be very surprised how capable these robots are. Like, they're going to be very good, very soon. Taking a big step back and bringing everything together, where are we at right now? Again, it's going to be very hard to really understand, but essentially, we need to think about pre-training, test time compute, inference scaling, and all of these scaling laws, and kind of like really understand what does it actually mean? Because so many people look at like the current state of AI, large language models, and all of these things, and they're like, oh, they're not actually intelligent. They're actually dumber than a cat. They're just next token predictors. They don't actually get or understand anything. And uh, the science says that they just are advanced pattern matching systems that are semantically relating the the tokens or the words in a sentence with other tokens and then predicting accurately the next token in a sequence given that data which objectively kind of that's true but also objectively if you look at mechanistic interpretability we actually have no idea how these things work so yeah that is an assumption that is objectively correct but it, the other question you need to ask yourself is how much of humans is doing the same thing? Because whenever I get in my car and I drive somewhere, I am using system one thinking. It is a knee jerk reaction to put the key in the ignition, turn it on, put it in the gear and then hit the gas. I don't have to think about it. It's a knee jerk reaction. Pre-training is the same exact thing as that. Pre-training is system one thinking. It's a reactionary approach to the prompt that you give the AI. If I give the AI a prompt and, it's, and I say, hey, can you solve this problem? It will solve it with system one thinking to an astoundingly accurate degree. Really think about that. With system one thinking, the AI will solve that problem to an astoundingly accurate degree. And it's not a very simple problem. It's not a completely obvious problem. It'll still solve it to an astoundingly accurate degree. I cannot stress that enough. Now, you let that model have inference time compute. You let it have test time compute. You let it think. You let the chain of thought continue for a long period of time. The emergence that comes out of that is profound. And we do not know a limit to that. Because for you, you have been thinking for decades. Your chain of thought doesn't stop. Even when you're sleeping, your subconscious is solving problems in your head. Like you'll be working on a problem and you'll stop thinking about it. You'll go to sleep and the next day you'll have the answer. It's not that you just, it, it didn't just get shot into your brain from the ether. No, dude, your brain has been doing chain of thought. It's been continuously working on the problem in the background, in your subconscious. You have a mechanism that continues to work back there, right? So you always have this active inference. That is the only thing we're missing from these models is active inference for them to be AGI, right? They're basically AGI already. I mean, we can easily just give these models active inference. It just is very expensive, right? Um, they are already doing this in OpenAI. They've already just like let these models think for arbitrarily long period of time. And they are extremely, extremely, extremely intelligent, like top five in the world at certain thing. And really that's the entire thing is like, whenever we do have that capability of active inference, and then we'll just need active training from there so that they can learn and uh, adapt on the fly, like there's not many things left to solve after that. Sam Altman already talked about GPT-5 and how it'll be merging all of the modalities of all of their systems that they have created in OpenAI, including deep research, the software engineering agents that they're coming out with, all of these things are gonna be put into one single model. And not to mention, they're already beta testing a uh, the memory capacity that is basically infinite. It can remember every single conversation you have ever had with it. They're beta testing that right now. I'm willing to bet towards the end of this year, we'll all get access to something like that where the memory context length of these models, the memory that they have is basically infinite, basically infinite. So GPT-5 is gonna basically be like AGI. It's gonna be the 
system that we've all been dreaming of kind of where it has like this infinite memory you can use it as like a virtual collaborator and it's effectively going to be one of the better software engineers that are out there um and at that point I mean, it's hard to tell what SaaS companies you would want to use because any software application you can just build yourself and have your AGI level system deploy it for you and you just go use it for free. So all of software besides network effect platforms will be dying at the pace of AI adoption. Now, service-based businesses online will start to do the same as these models uh, become more generally capable. Because again, right now we're kind of starting in the realm of STEM, where it's like sciences and maths and like engineering on computers. Like all of the direct applications that a human would usually be doing themselves, those things will be solved. And then what will be left is the higher level of thinking, like understanding the complex adaptive system and the problem that you're trying to solve at a very macro scale and really understanding the high layer of things like a CEO does or an extremely good investor or venture capitalist does. Those things are going to be a little bit longer to saturate with AI. I don't know how long it'll be. My intuition tells me it's going to be much faster than I would like to think because I would like to have some like intellectual alpha there for a little bit. I don't know if I will, unfortunately. Um, but eventually we'll, we will get there. And uh, right now though, we will have these, basically these like 10 X engineers, these employees who are cracked <laughs> and can pretty much solve any problem on our computer and just GPT five itself. Just that model itself is going to eat like 25% of software because it does effectively 25% of what people use software for, especially if you're not like a massive company. Um, it pretty much already does that. And if you want it to build like a CRM, it already can one shot those today. If you plug Cloud 3.5 Sonnet into Cursor and you get a reasonable prompt, it can one shot an entire CRM platform right now, like literally today. Um, which I've have, I have examples in past YouTube videos if you wanna see. So the logical conclusion here is all of software will be dying at the pace of AI adoption over time as these models have better higher level reasoning and have better world models and have more of like active data, which we are getting that very soon. All of online service-based businesses will be dying at the pace of AI adoption, probably by the end of this year. Um, and then from there, the final version of online business will be network effect platforms like Airbnb, where the product isn't the platform itself, it's the millions of individuals on the platform that want to rent out their homes, right? That's the product, not just the platform. The platform is a nice piece of glue that holds everything together, but the actual product is the people. Network effect platforms are the future or just a community business in general, or like a, um, like a Web3 community. Web3 communities are the future, at least for the foreseeable future. All of SaaS, all of online business in general is gonna collapse in the communities and network effect platforms. Other than that, you need to be working in the world of atoms, like doing things in the physical world. Uh, if you're not doing the things I just listed or working in the world of atoms, you're just going to be automated and living on UBI. That's harsh reality, uh, which it doesn't, it isn't even really harsh. If you ask me, I think we're going to an amazing place. I think the future is going to be fucking awesome. We're going to something that'll look similar to utopia compared to what we live in today. On the other side of this, it's going to be sick. But in the meantime, things are going to get weird and things are going to get worse before they get better. I think that's pretty obvious at this point. Uh, that's why people watch my YouTube channel. Um, I mean, that's not the main reason, but that's one of the reasons because people realize they need to adapt with this technology if they want to keep up and they need to build something that cash flows if they want to make it through this transition smoothly because we don't know what it's going to look like. Uh, the probability of certain individuals hoarding resources for as long as they can is very likely, um, especially like, uh, like the people building the like Sam Altman, for example, like Sam Altman already said, like he uses every time he talks about another frontier model company, he says the word competition. Um, if you were, if you were Sam Altman and you thought ASI was just going to be this thing that benefits all of humanity equally, you would not be using the word competition. Um, just, just throwing that out there. So the logical assumption, the logical conclusion, especially if you hear, uh, what is his name? 
uh, the chief product officer, they Sam Altman and uh, the chief product officer Kevin Way had an interview in Japan, and it was either Japan or somewhere else. And they were asking Kevin, "What do, what do we he think? What does he think the future market will look like?" And he's like, "I think just capitalism will continue to exist as it does today, which I can I tend to agree with. And uh, intelligence will just kind of be like this new form of capital, which I've been saying on this YouTube channel for a while. And uh, we'll just continue to keep going as we have, and everything's going to more or less stay the same. And we'll still have our competitive drivers. Resource distributions will still form hierarchical structures, and uh, intelligence will be capital in the future. That's exactly what he said. So." If the people who are building this technology are saying that, those are priors that we should be using in our reasoning frameworks to justify the actions that we are taking today to uh, arrive at the conclusion as to where things are actually heading, right? That being said, if you're not building a community right now, start. If you're not building a YouTube channel, that's why I'm building a YouTube channel. If you're not building a YouTube channel and building a community and building an audience, right now start like that's the reason i'm doing these things <laughs> is because i do realize that these things are coming and none of us are gonna just want to live on ubi <laughs> it's not a good idea <laughs> um it, it, it's kind of a terrifying idea to just live on ubi to not have your own autonomy have somebody else giving the life force to you and having control over your life force you don't have control over it yourself it's not a good outcome. Um, we don't know how it's going to end up in the very, very long run. The short run's pretty obvious. <laughs> the short run is quite obvious. It's kind of inevitable at this point. Automation is coming. Online business is changing today, starting right now. And um, over the next few years, it'll be completely played out. Um, and then the physical world, following shortly after, as you can tell. That's why I showed the, the new scaling laws for robotics. It's coming very soon, <laughs> very soon. Um, it's hard to really stress this stuff without sounding like a crazy person. <laughs> but nonetheless, if you're not already building an audience, if you're not already posting on YouTube, if you're not already building a community, start. If you're not building something in the, within the world of atoms, if you don't want to build a community, build something within the world of atoms, start, just do it. Like the only thing keeping you back right now is yourself. You know you can do it, people do it. I am a human. And I'm doing these things. You are a human. You can do these things too. I promise you. <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, if you are genuinely serious about adapting with the technology, keeping up with the changes that are changing so fast, and you want to have conversations with myself, other entrepreneurs who are also doing the same, uh, you can join my community. It's linked in the description below. It's literally only $7 per month. The price might be going up in the future. Uh, we're not exactly sure on how that's going to work yet, but um, I recommend joining sooner than later if you want to have like first mover advantage on the stuff that's happening. We have a lot of very valuable insights in there. You get uh, full insights on exactly what I am doing, even some things I don't fully share on YouTube, which uh, I might change that in the future. I might start sharing a little bit more uh, as as I start executing on those things. But genuinely, if you are somebody who is fully committed to adapting to these changes, join my community, linked in the description below. It's actually a very valuable place. We have calls every single Tuesday and Friday on Zoom, and uh, we basically talk about the changes that are happening and how we can all position ourselves today to make sure we are in a good position in the future. That being said, I will see you in the next video. Peace.